Hi, welcome to lesson number three in geometry. We're going to talk about interior and exterior angle of polygons in this lesson. The first thing we're going to review is the multiplication property of equality. If you remember from the first couple of lessons, Geometry is all about the reasoning, the deductive reasoning that you're trying to prove a hypothesis. And we're going to use the multiplication property of equality, the transitive property of equality, the identity property, all these properties that you've been learning in school. We're going to use those to back up our proofs in our reasoning. So the multiplication property of equality basically says if A equals B, so A and B are the same thing, then A times B equals B times C. Or a divided by B, A divided by C, excuse me, I'm gonna have to go back and fix that, equals B divided by C, and C cannot equal zero. A times C equals B times C, or A divided by B equals B divided by C, and C cannot equal zero. If we put some real numbers with that. Let's say A and B are two. C equals three. Well, two times three equals six. That's A times C. And two times three equals six. That's B times C. 2 times 3 equals 6, 2 times 3 equals 6. Same thing. And 2 divided by 3 equals 2 divided by 3. So you're going to use this multiplication property of equality because it is always true. It's a property. It never changes. It's true forever for every situation. And we're going to use it in proofs in geometry throughout the year. So we're going to start with polygons in these proofs. Okay, so you also had a property called the transitive property of equality. I don't want to miss one, so I just want to pull them up on my screen as we talk about them. And that one says, If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So if A, A equals two, B equals two, and C equals, I don't know. Well, A equals B, right? And what if we know in here that B equals C? The way we know that C must equal two is if A is two and B is two, A and B are equal. Well, if B equals C, then C must be two. That is a property of equality that we are going to recite as grounds for our proofs as we're using this deductive reasoning through geometry. It sounds silly to spell it out, but every step that you make in a proof, you have to back it up with a property of math. Okay. Then we have the reflexive property, and you're going to use this one a lot. And reflexive sounds like reflection,
And basically, for any real number, x, x equals x. So it's like looking in a mirror at yourself. The mirror is the equal sign, and it's the same thing on both sides. And you will have to cite this reflexive property in your proof. You definitely want to know it and recognize it when you see it so that you can use it in your steps. And the way you will see this is you'll have to identify and put steps in order on your study island. How about the symmetric property of equality? So symmetric is like symmetry, but that's not really making any sense in this Definition, so if x equals y, I don't know why I put four. If x equals y, then y equals x. There's a conditional statement for you, back from lesson one. The hypothesis is first, the conclusion is the second. You just reverse those around an equal sign. Then we have our addition property of equality which says if x equals y, then x plus z has to equal y plus z. You have the subtraction equality, which is just like the addition but opposite. You're going to subtract a z. And then you have the division property, which is kind of covered in the multiplication property. And probably the one that you're going to use the most, the transitive property and the substitution property, you're going to use a lot more than any of the other ones. If x equals y and x equals z, then we can substitute and say y equals z. So we substituted in in place of x. So we took this z and we put it in place of the x, or you could look at it the other way and say we put this y in place of this x. We substituted because we knew they were equal. Either way, I get you that final answer. Okay, so there's your properties. Have those terms written down in some notes because as you start lining out these proofs step by step, you'll have to recite these as the reasons that you said each step in your thought process. As you begin to prove a final piece true, it requires step by step thought. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about polygons. What is a polygon? So let's break the word up. Poly equals many. Gone equals side. So polygons are flat shapes. They're just two-dimensional. They don't have any thickness. So we're not talking about a sphere or a cube. We're talking about flat things that you can draw on a piece of paper. And they have many sides. So usually three or more sides. That's what a polygon is. And we classify those polygons as concave or convex. And open or closed. So 
as we look at some shapes on the screen, imagine if we put a little mouse in here, and there he is. He could run all around in this cage, right? Can he get out? No, he's trapped in there. Therefore, this one is open. Because the little mouse, when you put him in there, he can't escape. That's, I'm sorry, <laughs> it's not open. Close. Good grief. Was so taken by finding my circle drawer up there. Said it wrong. It's a closed up space. He cannot get out. Now, an open shape might look like this. Now, if we put the little mouse in here, he could get out, right? He could get out right there. So therefore, this one is open. So you want to go ahead and get some of these picture examples in your note. That's open because he can get out. This is closed because he can't. You need to pause the video to go ahead and get those, go ahead. Now our next classification of shape is the concave or the convex. Sometimes if you drop something, you dent it. So, or if you take a hammer to something, you could cave the side in. An example of that might be a can. So if you have a can, like a big metal trash can, and you take a hammer and you hit the side of that trash can, you've caved it in with that hammer, okay? That's a hammer, horrible hammer. That is concave. So imagine that you took something like a stick or a hammer or something and you caved the side of a shape in. How are you? So we'll draw us a concave shape. Use concave and welding? Well, they give you concave weld that means they want the weld to be like convex and want to be more rounded that way. So if they want it concave, you have to grind it. So we use these terms in welding, Mason says. There's concave. So see how the hammer, you took the hammer and you hit it right here and you bashed in the side of it, okay? That is a concave shape because it's caved in. Convex is just the opposite. So a convex shape is not dented in. might look something like that. Ooh. 
so convex. No one has caved it in with their hammer. And there's that. So you can have concave or convex along with open or closed shapes as well. All right. So the last classification of a polygon is regularity. Is the polygon a regular polygon or not? So I will draw you a regular polygon. That is a perfect square. Every side is the same length. And every angle is perfect 90 degrees. So a regular polygon, all sides are, do you remember the name for equal in geometry? Congruent. All sides are congruent and all angles are congruent. Now the opposite of that, which we won't use a lot in geometry, is something like an irregular Obviously, these angles are not all equal, and these side lengths are not all equal. So this is what you're going to term as an irregular polygon. Not all congruent. So most of the things that we're going to look at in geometry, especially in these uh, upcoming lessons, will be regular polygons because there are some characteristics with regular polygons that we can use in our deductive reasoning in geometry. Every single convex, I remember that is not caved in, is 360 degrees. Actually, it doesn't even matter if it's regular. Every single convex polygon, that means you didn't cave it in with a hammer, the exterior angles, and we talked about interior exterior in our lesson about classifying angles and lines, that's on the outside, always totals 360 degrees. The sum of all of the exterior angles. Now this gets a little confusing. And I'm going to do my best to draw a shape. That you're going to just have to stretch the imagination and know that this is a closed shape. and know that it is a regular pentagon. So that's your five-sided pentagon. Work with me here and know that it is an even one. So when we look at exterior angles, you have got to face these extensions of the sides 
all in the same direction. You see how I'm going from right to left? You have to always do that. You can't go the opposite way on one and then not on the other. So I could not throw in one that goes in this direction right here. Everything has to go in the same direction. So this black line, we can't use it. We always need to go in the same direction. Now we could use all black lines if we wanted. If we wanted to use all of these instead, we could go opposite. You just cannot mix and match in the same shape. You can choose a direction and go that way. So I'm either gonna look at all the black lines or all the red lines. I'm gonna take the black lines away and just look at the red. Now the exterior angle, we're not looking at the straight angle. We're gonna look at the measurement of this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle. And the rule says if I add all of those up, I get 360 degrees. Add up all of the exterior angles and you have 360 degrees. Now, what do you remember about regular polygons? All angles are congruent. So if this is a regular polygon and every single angle is congruent, all those red dots are the exact same thing. So let the measure of one of the exterior angles equal x. How many are there? We have x plus x plus x plus x plus x. There are five of those red dots and we add them all together and we get 360. Well, that's 5x equals 360. So you're going to divide both sides by 5. When you divide both sides by 5, these 5s cancel out. And we're going to go to our PI Inspire, PI 30, excess multi view. Not the inspire, why I keep calling it that. And we're gonna do that 360 divided by five and hit enter. That's 72. So I know that every one of those angles is 72 degrees. Because it's a regular polygon, all sides and angles are congruent. And because anytime I add up all of the exterior angles of a polygon, I always end up with a total of 72 every single time. That's what the theorem says. Okay, that works with any convex polygon and the fact that I knew they were all equal is because we were given the information that it was a regular polygon. If you're not told it's regular, you cannot do what we just did because you don't know they're all equal. A regular polygon, all these angles are equal and it doesn't matter how many sides you've got, the exterior always adds up to 360 degrees. So another polygon that you could use would be a rectangle. So in the rectangle, let's go from, let's go clockwise with our line. clockwise around the shape 
and we can't use our straight angle. We're gonna use the other one. So we have one, two, three, four. How many of those are there? Four. And we know they all are equal because it's a regular. Imagine that was a square. We also know they're all 90, even though it's not a square, it's not a regular polygon because the top and bottom is clearly longer than the left and right. So we're not even gonna pretend that far. But we do know that the definition of a rectangle is the sides are perpendicular. So all those are 90. So 90 times four is how much? Three hundred and sixty, which is exactly what the proof says. Add up all the exterior angles, and you get three hundred and sixty degrees. It works for every single shape that there are. Okay. All right. Now the next theorem that we have, the next property, is having to do with the interior angles. of a polygon. And we have a formula n minus 2 times 180. where n equals the number of sides on the polygon. You're gonna need to remember that. It's gonna keep coming back through the entire class. Don't ever forget that. I is the measure of one of the interior angles, just one of them. So let's imagine that we have this shape. Hmm. This is so difficult to draw freehanded. Woo, that's not going to work. Need a shape library. This would be a little better. So how many sides does this shape have? And we're going to pretend I did draw a regular one. So it has six sides. So if you're gonna classify that, you're gonna classify it as a hexagon, because hexa means six. So it has six sides to it, and we need to figure out the measure of one of the interior angles, only one. Well, you have a formula there, n minus two times 180. So the measure of one of the interior angles equals the number of sides, six minus two times 180. All you need to do is put that into your calculator just like it is. You don't need to do it in two steps. You don't need to do any math in your head whatsoever. 6 minus 2 times 180. You're literally going to use your parentheses and put 6 minus 2 times 180, exactly like it is on the formula. Don't try to do any math in your head. Enter. 720 is the sum of all of those interior angles. So inside this shape, 
all of these angles total up to 720 degrees. I think I said that the I was the measure of one, and I'm sorry, that's not what the big I is. That's the sum of all of them. Now to find what one of them is, 720 is the total of all of them. How will we find one of them? Well, we know every single one of these angles are equal. All of these are the exact same thing. They're all congruent because this is a regular polygon. I told you that when I drew it. All we need to do is take our 720 and divide by six. And then we'll know the measure of one. So 720 divided by six. Divide by six. I already had 720 in there, so you just have to push the division button. 120 degrees each. So each one of those is 120. So the measure of one of the interiors is 120 degrees. Okay, all right. So let's look at some of the problems on your worksheet. As we look at Numbers one through five, you're just classifying the quadru the polygon. So you're just naming the shape, count the sides, and you just really need to study your prefixes. Those are easy enough. Up to number 10, are they convex or concave? And when we get to number 11, is exactly what we did in step one your exterior angles, and it doesn't matter. If you look at number 12, number 12 has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sides on number 12. Number 12 is a dodecagon. No, it's not, it's a decagon. Like a decade. And they want to know the measure of just one of the exteriors. Well, all 10 add up to 360. So 360 divided by 10 equals 36 degrees. Because they're all the same. It's a regular polygon and it tells you that in the instruction. Now on number 16 through 20, is it regular or not? Are all the sides the same length and the angles equal? Then when we get to number 21 through 25, it's find the measure of one of the interiors, just one of the interiors. So you're gonna to have to do your division. And then at the end, it's the big sum. So you don't actually divide, you're just gonna use your formula, N minus two, the sum of all the interiors, that's all added up equals n minus 2 times 180. Okay, all right, so you are on this, don't forget, you're going to upload the picture of the note. You're going to upload a picture of work shown onto the first two questions of the Google form, and then you're gonna input your answers on the Google form. If you struggle at all with this worksheet, use homework help to make absolutely certain that you understand every aspect of this. Now, when you go to do your study island ribbon, you're gonna have some proofs on there. So I wanna look at an example of a proof with you. Yeah, 
find it. Okay. And so here's what one of those is going to look like. This is what I was talking about with proof. So on a proof, you have your state, you know where you're starting. We're starting with, we know that PQ is parallel to AC. They've given us that. And what are we trying to prove? That the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So we're trying to go from this to this logically step by step. And we've got one, two, three steps to get there. So the very first thing that you have is the alternate interior angle theorem. We studied that in our first lesson and it says angle ABP. So angle ABP is this angle right here, equals angle BAC. They know that because the alternate interior angle theorem. So if we will extend that bottom of that triangle, we were given the information that they were parallel. So we know that this line is parallel to that line. So those are alternate interior angles. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to kind of look at our answers here. This one's gone. Okay. And we're going to go from there and figure out hmm, what else could we possibly do? Let's see. Let me think. Can I use this at all? The sum of linear angles is 180. Would this match up to any of these in logical steps to try to get to the sum of those angles equals 180? Now, if I'm going to get the sum of those angles equals 180, it's BAC. A, B, C, and A, C, B. So this is my final step. This is going to go right here at the end. I know that. So somehow I need to know, is it this one or this one that got me there? And I'm leaning to figure, looking at this one, and I want to read it. So C, B, Q equals A, C, B. Is there any way at all that we could say C, B, Q equals A, C, B? Well, let's look at those angles. Are they any type of angle that we've studied? ACB and CBQ. And they are. So on this side, our transversal that we're looking at is the green line. We have two parallel lines with the transversal. Look right there. Those are alternate interior angles. They are congruent. So the next step, actually, we didn't need to cross that one off of there. That's what we're going to use in the next step as well. So we're going to say this is our next logical conclusion because of the alternate angle theorem. So on your study island, you would literally drag these down and put them in order. But we're going to bring it here, and we're going to bring it here. Okay, from that, so I know ABP equals BAC, and I know CBQ equals ACB.
So I also know at the top, if I add up the red, the blue, and the brown trio of angles, how much do I get? That whole total is 180 degrees right here, right? Because it's a straight line. So ABP, ABC, and CBQ. That's the red, the brown, and the purple. So the brown one is ABC. The purple one is CBQ. And the red one is ABP. Those three angles are a straight line. So we know that this can be said because the sum of linear angles or those that make up a straight line always is 180. So this will be our next reason for saying this. The one on the left is what you say. The one on the right is your justification for making that statement. Now, if you look at the difference between the red ones and the brown ones, what we did was we substituted. Therefore, our last step for substitution is what got us to our final answer that we were looking for to start with. So our substitution was the reasoning for the last one. So when you do your study island, it's a step-by-step. -step. You really have to analyze it. You have to think about everything we've learned up to this point and how would you would use them. And it was easy to rule this one out of the first choices because I knew it was my last statement. So that got me going. I already knew in step one that this was my ending. So I could get that out of the way. They're difficult. Proofs are difficult. You just need to go in logical order on the left, one piece at a time, kind of like solving those algebraic equations, and make sure that you're backing it up with a theorem or a property on the right. Now, I will tell you, on your multiple choice, on these kinds of questions, when you see them on your worksheet, if they ever look like that, all of the answers will be correct. So sometimes you will have a worksheet that shows something just like this, and it is a copy of a virtual worksheet. So if ever you get a drag and drop on your worksheet, check any answer. This worksheet is not like that. This worksheet only has one answer per question. But occasionally you're going to get a drag and drop image just like what you see on the screen, which is from a study island worksheet and all answers are gonna be correct. Not on this one, but I did want you to be prepared having seen something like this before you jumped into that ribbon, all right? Okay, I will see you in the next lesson, lesson number four.